Hello, good evening. Welcome to Look North. Our top story tonight. A year after the South Yorkshire floods, the agony continues for families and businesses. Hundreds Thank you for joining me. It's a year since devastating flooding in South Yorkshire and the North Midlands. Tonight, there's a warning that new flood defences may not be enough to protect in future all the homes and businesses that were hit. 1,200 properties had to be evacuated as a month's worth of rain fell in just 24 hours. Some residents still haven't moved back home. The village of Fish Lake near Doncaster was one of the worst affected places. Phil Bobber is there for us tonight. Phil, I recognise that church well. It became a real... Next tonight, police have increased patrols in parts of Leeds after two nights of disorder with fireworks and bricks thrown at officers in riot gear. Police vans were targeted and vehicles damaged when a large crowd gathered in Holton Moor last night. It followed outbreaks of violence on Saturday. Three people have been arrested. Here's Corinne Wheatley. Police vans... Next tonight, they've been called the excluded. Thousands of people in our region are still missing out on any government support during lockdown, despite having their income decimated by the pandemic. One campaign group estimates three million people nationwide have not received any financial support, even though they run businesses that can't operate. Here's our business correspondent, Spencer Stokes. The Labour leader, uh, Keir Starmer, this morning said that he would be addressing those issues with the Chancellor. Realistically, what can the government do? Can they really help everyone in every situation? Sadly, we are hearing from people who are slipping through the gaps and are really struggling. Uh, some may hear the title company director and think high earner, but in John's situation, that isn't the case. There's many on fellow earning more than him. Quite often, you know, people... Office for National Statistics estimates there's three million people caught in that gap who are just like Cheryl and John. What advice do you have for them, Tom? It's really... Tanya joins me now for the sport. Good to see you. Thank you very much indeed. Let's start with football. It was a miserable Saturday for Leeds United and Sheffield United. The European horse ever do it. Yeah, absolutely amazing. He just landed back from America when he does that interview. Fantastic, Tanya. Thank you. We're going to stay with horse racing now and get an update on the fundraising efforts of retired rugby league star Rob Burrow. Now, as I'm sure you know, Rob was diagnosed with motor neurone disease last year, just two years after retiring from the Leeds Rhinos. Now, a thoroughbred racing horse has been named after him to raise money for research into the disease. Cathy Killick reports. He's clearly got a fight when Rob may not be able to. Cathy Killick, BBC Look North. He really is a remarkable person, isn't he, Rob? Continues to just inspire so many people. Let's look at the weather now. Isn't that an absolutely stunning picture? But the weather hasn't been very kind to us, has it, the last few days? Thick fog blanketing most of the region. But despite the poor conditions, many of you have managed to get out and about over the week and capture some really beautiful pictures just like this of the fog descending on your part of the world. Oh, you're a talented bunch, some gorgeous pictures there. Paul, it can often be said I've got my head in the clouds, but it's lasted a long time as this fog, hasn't it? It has. What's um, called? We've had over the last few days. You need three things to shift it. First of all, the sun. Well, the sun's too weak at this time of the year to burn it off. Secondly, you need wind, and we haven't had any strong winds. And the third thing is dry air. Well, we're going to get a bit of wind tomorrow, so hopefully the fog will lift during the course of tomorrow. So it's not unusual to have fog in autumn, but no. it is unusual for it to last so long. Well, I suppose it is, uh, but the main thing is it's coincided with bonfire nights, and you've probably, if you smell the air outside, it's full of pollution, it's mm. really dirty air, it's not really bad if you've got respiratory issues, but we should clean things up, we do, or dry air. See, I was listening. You were listening, that, <laughs> I'm shocked. There's always a first. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Well, that's it from us. We'll be back at half ten this evening. Join us then, bye-bye for now.